here are some of the teams we mentioned yesterday with Super Bowl odds. This is via Caesars. The Titans are plus 1,800. The Broncos plus 2,500. The Bucks plus 1,400. We're putting this up on ESPN2 if you want to follow along. The Colts plus 2,500. Dolphins 4,000. 4, Saints 3,500. Browns 4,000. And Vikings 5,000. He who is a Matthew Stafford trade away from next year's Super Bowl. But 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 these odds, these aren't saying, obviously, these are just odds. They're not saying these teams are uh one Matthew Stafford away. This no, is not No, no, season. no. We're odds. saying no. we're saying like season. you know, take your pick. The Broncos plus twenty five hundred. You put Yeah, I, yeah. These I are teams it. around where the Rams were last year exactly. at this time. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it, Evan. Um I would you know, I, I like you say you said Matthew Stafford away. I I start off with the Tennessee Titans. I start off with the Tennessee Titans. Although Ryan Tannehill threw the three interceptions, I could clearly say that Vrabel called the game differently than what he probably wish he did something different because going forward on uh, some of those plays at the end, calling it letting uh, Tannehill carry the ball, and then all of a sudden giving it to Derrick Henry on fourth down. Some of those things would have changed the outcome of the game against Cincinnati. Anyway, I would say let's start off with the Titans. I then would probably jump to the Broncos. When you look at the Broncos receiving core and some of the stuff that they got, they certainly got some pieces in play defensively. They got some pieces in play. And then from there, um, depending on what happens to Terrific Tom, is Tom going – let's assume Tom is done. He's going to be gone. If they can retool, re-sign some of their players back, I think they could be a, you know, Tom Brady-ish, Matthew Stafford, old Tom Brady, Matthew Stafford away from Super Bowl. The New Orleans Saints uh, can fall into that category. The Indianapolis Colts, we heard uh, uh, Jim Ursay about a week ago talk about how he sat and watched the games and realized that – he needs a quarterback that can put up the type of points that you need to put up. In pro- and he didn't mention Carson Wentz by names, but certainly Carson Wentz is somebody that he looked at and said, I need to replace him without saying I need to replace him. Uh, the yeah, Browns, I can see, I can the Vikings. I yeah, I, I would even. I would also go with the 40. I mean, look, he probably can't be all in because you got Trey Lance, but I'll, 49ers, man. Like they're, And I know you guys are both somewhat decent on Jimmy G, but you think with their running game with Mitchell, you think with – Debo Samuel with George Kittle with their defense and the way they are, if you upgraded that quarterback position, they're right there to win a Super Bowl. Derek Carr is on the 49ers. You probably win a Super Bowl. That's the thing I find so difficult about the NFL compared to the NBA or Major League Baseball. The sample sizes are so small, right? So, like, you see Tannehill in a few moments or Garoppolo in a few moments not get it done. And, and then you drop Stafford in there, and he, ha- and he gets it done. And I'm not going to say happens to get it done, because that's the evidence we have. And we can see he's a little more – he's more talented, right? But then if you just – what, is Garoppolo incapable of hitting Sanders on that play? Then our whole feeling about it changes. It's just like it boils de- – so – but that's what we know. And these teams want to go out and get quarterbacks with the ability and the temperament to make those plays in high-leverage moments – especially key on teams with coaches and, and O-lines and receivers, et cetera, where you think you're going to be in those moments. That's not Tannehill so far. Maybe it could be Tannehill, but based on what we've seen, it hasn't been him yet, and we just don't believe it, right? I mean, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, it's in, Tennessee is the, the team for me. Uh, it's the Tennessee Titans. If they could figure out their quarterback situation, if they can get an Aaron Rodgers, it helps them out. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers helps most teams out, I would say. But Tennessee, you made a compelling case originally why Rodgers should go, should go to Tennessee. And they are very much to me where the Browns were a year ago when it was like, hey, where would, if Aaron Rodgers just parachuted into Cleveland, oh, my God. It's not that way anymore in Cleveland. Mm-hmm. But it is that way in Tennessee. I agree. I mean, just it takes a lot of pressure off Derrick Henry to be that bell cow every single, every single down. Right? Like imagine actually having play action with him, utilizing the passing game more with a guy like Aaron Rodgers if that were to happen. I mean, that's a scary combination with their wide receiver. Derrick court. Henry, Aaron Rodgers, and then those two receivers? Even De- I mean, Derrick Henry, Derrick Carr. 
Still, I'm, not the same to me, but uh, I, I, Derek Carr is very good. But Derek, Derek Carr is still very good. Yeah. Derek, Derek very Carr is an upgrade from Ryan Tannehill. He, I think so. That's right. And by the way, you think year, so? Like, well, no, no, my think point, operative word. But like, that's you what don't I mean so? about the sample size. It's so such small. But I agree. Yes, no, I agree with you on this. A year or two ago, I would have put Tannehill ahead of Derek Carr. I don't feel that way anymore. We get a little more information. Here's another team. Chris Canty says could be a Stafford trade away. Listen to this. Just makes sense if you're the Eagles to go that direction because you look at the landscape of that division, you're talking about the Dallas Cowboys really only being the only team that you would consider a true contender. It doesn't feel like it's a tough path in order to get to the tournament. And then the changing landscape when it comes to the NFC as a whole with two top flight quarterbacks potentially leaving the conference, one via retirement, one via trade. I just feel like this is a prime opportunity for them as well if they want to be aggressive. Key, um, that's uh, obviously Chris Canty from Canty and Golick Jr. Uh, are the Eagles? He he does make a point. The they got a real, real good offensive line, and they are in a weak division. What about the Eagles? No, because I don't think I don't think the Dallas Cowboys are going to go anywhere. I think the Dallas Cowboys are going to get better. Dan Quinn in his second year in the defensive side of the ball. They just got to get their mental uh, state of mind together. And Kelly Moore has got to figure out what he wants to do. Does he want to continue to keep interviewing every other week? Or does he want to really take it serious and buckle down and become an offensive coordinator instead of someone looking for a head coaching job? The Eagles certainly don't. I mean, they're, they made the playoffs. They were the seventh seed. It was cute. Everything was great. I think you continue to uh, let Jalen Hurts grow. But even if you got an Aaron Rodgers or you got one of the Russell Wilson, they don't have enough, in my opinion, mm. to be where the Rams are. The Rams had something. They were already a playoff perennial. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.